Hi guys, I'm Henry and you're watching Car Reels. Today we have two BMW SUVs for you, the BMW X7 and the BMW X5. And we're gonna talk a little bit about the differences, but mostly we're gonna focus on the X7 because I think it's an excellent utility vehicle. BMW finally thinks about the people that are not just behind the steering wheel, but also the people in the back. So this car is actually so tall, I don't have to get down to show you guys. The grille is massive. It's not the same shape and size as the new 4 Series and M3 and M4 that's coming out, but it's still quite ginormous. I like it in black. It's a little bit more sleek. In the X5, it's chromey and it doesn't look as good as it does in black. It has the BMW laser headlights, which look quite nice. And generally the bumpers have very, very, very similar shapes, but the X7 is slightly bigger. The hoods also have very similar shapes and that's because they are the same car underneath. They have the same engine, 333 horsepower and 330 foot pounds of torque. I think BMW is hiding the true horsepower numbers because these cars really move much better than the power would suggest. They're really quite heavy. This car is roughly around 5,000 pounds. It starts at 4,800 pounds uh, with almost no options. And this is almost a base car and it's still quite heavy. The X5M competition, it's really up there at 5,500 pounds almost. This is even heavier. I mean, it's heavier because it's loaded with tech. It's got a third row, which is extremely useful. We're gonna get to that later. Now let's explore the sides of these cars. The X7 is quite a long vehicle. It's a very interesting vehicle up until here. They look almost identical. Once you start moving back, the X5 has a very sporty rear end and it looks really nice. The X7, it's not that it doesn't look nice, but it loses a little bit of a sporty flair. It loses a little bit of BMW-ness in some ways. It's not necessarily a bad thing because it's not meant to be super interesting in the back, but it does have BMW design language. The exhaust tips are identical on both cars. I do like that these exhaust tips are black and they're not chrome. The black on the black trim really sort of accentuates the car, makes it a little sleeker, makes it a little bit more pleasing to look at. Now, let's start this car from the back to the front. The tailgate, it has a split opening and I really, really do like that. Now, this may seem like a small trunk and this is loaded with a solar panel to charge the batteries. It has some mats here that the dealer has put in the back because it is winter still. And I do like that everything closes with a touch of a button. Now, the trunk may seem small with a, with a third row up, but once the third row goes down, it is really quite massive. Now, moving to the back. Huge door. It is a good thing that it's ginormous because it gives you very easy entry to the rear of this car. Now, let's go in the car and is just huge. I have set up the front seat as my driving position and I've even moved it back a little bit because I'm not a big guy at 5'10", I'm not very tall and I don't take up a lot of space and I kind of like to sit close to the steering wheel so I move the seat back for a little bit more comfort and I have a huge amount of space here, a huge amount of headroom, the sunroof, it's basically got three sunroof guys and it, it's like it's like daytime in here and we're indoors and it still feels like I have so much light in here. It does have a captain's chair option which is around $800 and it is absolutely worth it. So getting inside this car, getting inside this car is really not all that difficult. Now this, these seats are painfully slow. Like you just really need to sit here for a long time as they go up, still here, still here, still here. All right, let's go inside. In the back seat, this is the highlight feature of the X7. BMW, for the first time, has not only thought about the driver in the front seat and maybe the front passenger, they've actually thought about the rear seats in this car. And what a rear seat it is. We had a guy who's 6'2 come in here and sit beside me 
We did not rub shoulders. We had leg room. We had head room. We had space for our hands. This car has a cup holder. It even has nice trim that follows through with the rest of the theme of the car. And once you bring the seat back, do forgive it, it is quite slow. And don't think that you actually have to use things by hand. There are buttons right here that you can control everything with. I'm in here, I have space, I have headroom. Look how much headroom I have. Look at how much space is in here. This is absolutely incredible. And yeah, that if I have one complaint about this car is the fact that this seat does move very slow, but I, I, I will forgive it because the space in here is unreal. It is incredible, I can't stress enough. If anybody needs an SUV with a third row seat, this is the SUV for you full stop. I have never been in the back of an SUV in the third row that has as much space as this car has. Now moving up to the front, the front of every BMW is always special because BMW primarily cares about the person behind the steering wheel. As a passenger here, I feel like I have slightly less space than the person all the way to the back. Sure, I have good visibility, but it feels a little bit more cramped maybe than the X5 just because it has to have had a little bit of space given to the rear. You can't make this car look like a train. So it's still, it's still spacious, don't get me wrong, but it's it's BMW giving some priority to the rear seats and I really like that because that's the actual purpose of this vehicle to split the space between all three rows in a way that everybody feels relatively comfortable. Through here BMW design language they almost all look the same there's nothing wrong with that I kind of wish it was a little bit more distinguished but it is a nice place to be. The materials are super premium Everything feels very good. The seats are very comfortable. Obviously, there's absolutely nothing sporty or racy about this SUV. It does drive sporty enough for somebody who wants to enjoy giving it some throttle here and there, but generally speaking, this car for everyday usage is perfect. For a third row seat, SUV is perfect. I really do like this engine. Some people do suggest you get the the stronger V8 engine, but the straight six in this car is plenty of power, is silky smooth, it drives really well, it does roll a little bit, but that's perfect because it means that the compromise is a very soft, comfortable ride, and that's exactly what you need in an SUV like this. Okay, so the front seat in here, let's start this thing. It's very smooth and soft. The BMW noises are, are, are classic. It has all the gestures and it has all the features that you'd want. It is fully loaded top to bottom with BMW tech in here. I am quite fond of BMW interiors because they are a little bit more simple than other vehicles. In Audis, things are sort of hidden under menus. In here, you have the eight preset shortcuts, which look like radio buttons. I know they double up as other features, but this doesn't feel very modern to me. I kind of hope BMW soon changes this layout and this format in here. The cup holders in this are excellent. It's one of the only German cars that's sort of starting to show a lot of attention to the cup holders and their placement. Um, the stuff down here is very good. You have Sport, you have Comfort, you have Eco Pro, you have Adaptive, and this car has a cool extra feature which raises and lowers the height of this car. At its very lowest, this car is extremely easy to go in and out of. You don't get that weird step that you sometimes feel just brushing up against your leg as you leave. In the lowest setting, you can sort of almost walk out of this as if it's a car. In its highest setting, it really is really tall and it feels like it can go in places that normal SUVs can't normally reach. Five different settings. I'm not sure if it needed five. I think I would have been okay with three settings but it has five if you really are very specific and it's as easy as pressing a button down here. BMW center screen is excellent. It is really quite large and I am a huge fan of how the display is. It has a lot of features. I will show you guys some of its more in-depth features through here. Uh, if you go to car, it basically gives you all the information you'd want. You have the flow of the power and the engine uh, you have an X view, which sort of gives you which right height you're in and a compass. 
it has the sport displays and you can see your G meter, you can see your, your PSI, your temperatures, how much torque and horsepower it's using. I'm not sure if this is all that accurate, but you know, it, it, it's there if you really needed it. I'm not sure you'd really want it in this car. This is probably the thing you'd want the most in this car, which is the fuel mileage. Uh, this car is decently good with fuel consumption because of BMW's way of managing torque down low. I think it's really nice the way this car has torque at the, at the earlier on RPM, so you don't really need to push the throttle all the way down to sort of get the car moving. It's a big car and you want the torque to be right at the lower RPM so it gets going easily and this car does that. Going through more, through more settings, we have sort of service, engine oil, tire pressure, you know, the generic car informations and then we you can control pretty much everything you'd want in here it does have a fancy key if you really want this car doesn't have that option but you can buy the fancy key this car has the standard bmw infotainment system and it's quite easy to use and i really do like it the menus are really easy to navigate the parking sensors in this car they're not the fancy equipped 360 cameras that you can move the car about like we showed you guys in the X5M a couple of weeks ago. If you want to see that video, click up on the pop-out banner right now. It's really quite a fantastic car and we'd really recommend you guys go drive one of those. Sitting in here, feeling the steering wheel, the paddles feel really premium. Everything feels really premium. The steering wheel is very familiar. It's very, very much the same steering wheel as it is in the X5. Very similar in feel to the X5M. It just doesn't have the same stitching. It doesn't have the M blue and red stitching across, but it still feels very nice. The view out of here, it's a nice view. The side mirrors are a little bit small and they're small in basically all of the BMW SUVs. It's not necessarily a complaint because it's still got very good visibility, but it feels like they could have been a bit bigger or at least the inner glass portion could have been a bit bigger. There's very little complaints about this car. The only things you might not like about it are things that are subjective, like its looks, or maybe you want a little bit of more modern interior, like Audi's multiple screen setup. Other than that, this car, I, I just see, I just see very few flaws with it. The one thing that I do dislike about this car is the way the doors close. They're very large, and not having the soft closing feature, I have found myself trying to close the door multiple times, and is just hard to close on a first try feels like you sort of have to slam it a little bit in a luxury car that feels a little bit counterintuitive but minor complaint the rest of the car is excellent the 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 roof liner is excellent the materials in here are excellent this car overall oozes sort of luxury and and excellence and it drives very silky smooth this is one of my more preferred SUVs when it comes to third row seaters with seven seats. I know this car is equipped with a captain chair, so it only has six seats, but it can comfortably sit six adults. And I will take that over the middle seat, which you will use in rare occasions. And if you're gonna use that seat in rare occasions, might as well have the captain chairs. People will enjoy sitting here much better than being cramped with those other seats. Also makes getting in and out of the back much, much easier. The seats are slow, but it do, they do make life much easier going all the way to the back. At the back here, you can actually control the seats manually. So if you want maximum amount of people, you can put all the seats up. If you want the maximum amount of cargo, you can actually press the space for cargo and all the seats will go automatically down and give you a very, very, very large trunk here with just the touch of a button. Now let's go check out the X5. Not having the rear seats, this trunk is massive and it's quite useful. And this is even more useful. It's got a very, very durable material here, which is a very nice touch from BMW. It's just massive. And I can see why you've had so much space for the other seats in the X7, a little bit of a longer car. There's just so much space in here and it's a very usable trunk. This is a very usable SUV if you don't need space. If you don't need more than five seats and you wanna save yourself some money, this car drives a little bit better than the X7. So I wanna say if the space is not a priority for you, this might be the better SUV.
sitting in this car, there is almost no difference. I feel like I've just moved on to a different BMW. The seating position feels the same. The mirrors are the same. The steering wheel is the same. The displays are the same. The center console is the same. It's missing the, the ride adjustment because this car doesn't have it. It doesn't feel any more cramped in here. And that's because BMW has used space well in the X7. It feels very premium to be in here just as it does in that vehicle and there's really not much more you can say about the X5 compared to the X7 other than the fact that it doesn't have the same amount of room in the back it has a ginormous trunk it's extremely usable and it just doesn't have that third row uh, uh, otherwise it's essentially a very 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 similar SUV this does drive sportier it is much lighter it is better in the corners you will feel that every single day so the sport is a little bit something that you want out of your everyday drivability this is the suv for you this is definitely much easier to park this is much easier to live with because it's not so tall and it's not so long so it's really a personal preference and it does save you quite a bit of money this car equipped similarly you're going to look at anywhere between twenty dollars to $30,000 in savings with this vehicle over the X7. Now, if I am being completely honest with you, having the same features other than the ride height change and the rear seat trickery and maybe the extra sunroof that is in that car, but you don't need it in here because it would just be over the trunk. It's just simply I fail to see that necessity for the x7 if you don't need the space twenty thousand plus dollars is quite a lot of money to save and you get essentially a sportier suv so if that's something you care about the x5 is for you and if you really want to go all out and get the sportiest version of this car the x5m is for you and that is an incredible vehicle all right guys so to conclude the differences between the x7 and the x5 are essentially after the front cabin and back so if you really want space this is the one to get if you want a little bit of sport and you want a little bit of drivability with still with a good amount of utility the x5 will also do the job this is a slightly less expensive suv but it still offers the exact same premium quality as the x7 so it's really a personal preference or maybe you must have the third row seating and therefore the X7 would be the better SUV for you. I do like the looks of both of these SUVs. They are very similar. They have the essentially the same essence. They are very BMW. Interiors are nearly identical, if not completely identical. And I want to say I'm pleasantly surprised with the X7's rear seating space it was mind-blowing and i really really urge you guys to go take a look at this car if it's something that you're interested in if it's if it's the third row seat is important to you definitely give yourselves the chance to go look at one of these because they are absolutely incredible machines thank you so much for watching please like and subscribe don't forget to comment below i really quite like the x7 and this grill on the x5 is not doing it justice but in a nice trim the x5 looks really really sharp so see you guys next week.